The lymphatic system is a network of tissues and organs that help rid the body of toxins, waste and other unwanted materials. The primary function of the lymphatic system is to transport lymph and fluids containing infection fighting white blood cells throughout the body. The lymphatic system primarily consists of lymphatic vessels, which are similar to veins and the capillaries of the circulatory system. The vessels are connected to lymph nodes where lymph is filtered. My name is Selena, and in this lesson you will learn the structure of the lymphatic system, the functions, disorders and diseases. The lymphatic system consists of lymph, the fluid flowing in the lymphatic vessels, lymph vessels, lymph nodes, lymph organs, the sphenotimus, the diffuse lymphoid tissue, i.e. the tonsils, and bone marrow. Let's go through each of these. Lymph is a clear, watery fluid identical in composition to interstitial fluid. Lymph transports the plasma proteins that seep out of the capillary beds back to the bloodstream. Also carries away larger particles like bacteria and cell debris from damaged tissue. Contains lymphocytes, which circulate in the lymphatic system. Fluid that is forced out of the bloodstream during normal circulation is filtered through lymph nodes to remove bacteria, abnormal cells and other matter. This fluid is then transported back to the bloodstream via the lymph vessels. Lymph only moves in one direction, towards the heart. There is no pump like a heart involved in the movement of the lymph. The walls of large lymph vessels have an astringent ability to contract rhythmically the lymphatic pump. Also, lymph vessels are compressed by activity in adjacent structures as contraction of the muscles and the regular pulsation of large arteries. Lymph nodes or lymph glands are an important part of the immune system, acting as nodes between the lymphatic vessels that span the body. Immune cells that cluster in these nodes stand ready to attack any bacteria, viruses or other foreign substances that enter the body. The lymph nodes are susceptible to diseases such as infections, cancer and trauma. Transports waste which the circulatory system cannot cope with, purifies toxins, aids antibodies, antitoxins and lymphocytes, rejoins the circulatory system, is part of the immune system and is secondary in circulation. Lymphocytes are the cells responsible for the body's ability to distinguish and react. Through receptor molecules on the surface, lymphocytes are able to bind antigens, foreign substances or microorganisms that the host recognises as non-self and help remove them from the body. They make up 20 to 30 percent of white blood cells. T cells would be the majority, and B cells are responsible for immunity, specific defence, are producing the bone marrow and some lymphatic tissues. Each T and B cell carries antigen recognition molecules, allowing it to respond to only one specific antigen. The range of these molecules is genetically determined. T cells are part of the immune system that focus on specific foreign particles. Rather than generically attack any antibodies, T cells circulate until they encounter their specific antigen. As such, T cells play a critical part in immunity to foreign substances. They mature in the thymus and become fully specialised functional T cells and are released to the bloodstream. They have been programmed to recognise only one type of antigen and during the subsequent travels through the body will react to no other antigen. When they encounter their antigen for the first time, they become sensitised to it. They cannot detect a free antigen in body fluids, must be present with it on a cell membrane or another cell. B cells and T cells are also called lymphocytes. B cells fight bacteria and viruses by making a Y-shaped proteins called antibodies. 
these antibodies can act as an antigen receptors, which are specific to each pathogen and are able to lock onto the surface of an invading cell and mark it for destruction by other immune cells. The priming lymphoid tissue in the initial generation of B and T lymphocytes are the bone marrow and the thymus. Lymphatic capillaries are tiny blind ended tubes in the interstitial space. The same structure as blood capillaries, but the walls are more permeable. They join up to form larger lymph vessels. Nearly all tissues have a network of lymphatic vessels, except the central nervous system, the cornea of the eye, the bones and the epidermis. The wall of the lymphatic capillary is composed of endothelium, in which a simple squamous cells overlap to form a simple one-way valve. The lymphatic vessels, the walls are about the same thickness as those small veins and have the same layers of tissue, fibrous covering, middle layer of smooth muscle and elastic tissue and inner lining of endothelium. Have numerous cup-shaped valves, become larger as they join together, eventually forming two large ducts. Lymphatic capillaries are slightly larger in diameter and have greater oncotonic pressure than blood capillaries. Eventually, the vessels empty into lymphatic trunks, also known as collecting vessels, and these eventually converge to form the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct is much larger and drains lymph from the rest of the body. It begins in the front of the body of the front of the lumbar vertebrae and opens into the left subcutavian vein into the root of the neck, drains lymph from both legs, the pelvic and the abdominal cavities, the left half of the thorax, head and neck and the left arm. The right lymphatic duct is responsible for draining the lymph from the upper right quadrant of the body. This includes the right side of the head and neck, the right side of the thorax and the right upper limb. It's a dilated lymph vessel and about one centimeter long lies in the root of the neck and opens into the right subclavian vein. These two ducts then empty into the venous circulation at the subclavian veins via the right and left venous angles. Lymph nodes are oval or bean shaped structures which act to filter foreign particles from the blood and play an important role in the immune response to infection, often in groups. On average, an adult has around 400 to 450 different lymph nodes spread throughout the body, with the majority located within the abdomen. Each node contains T and B lymphocytes and other immune cells. They are exposed to the fluid as it passes through the node and can mount an immune response if they detect the presence of a pathogen. This immune response often recruits more inflammatory cells into the node, which is why lymph nodes are permeable during infection. They vary in size from a pinhead to the size of an almond. These lymph nodes also produce and store lymphocytes and other immune system cells that attack and destroy bacteria and other harmful substances in the fluid. Lymph flows slowly through the nose and is filtered by the lymphatic tissue as it passes. Organic material is destroyed in the lymph nodes by microphanges and antibodies. T and B cells mature in the nodes and are activated and also multiply. The spleen recognises old or damaged red blood cells and removes them from your body by breaking them down and saving any useful components such as iron in the process. This keeps the blood circulating in your body clean and function at its best. It's the largest lymph organ, lies in the upper left side of the abdomen, it's purplish in colour, varies in size in different individuals, its function is phagocytosis, which means to envelop and destroy bacteria and other foreign materials, storage of blood, immune response, it contains T and B cells. 
the thymus gland located behind your sternum and between your lungs is only active until puberty. After puberty, the thymus starts to slowly shrink and become replaced by fat. Thymosin is the hormone of the thymus and it stimulates the development of disease-fighting T cells. The thymus gland will not function throughout a full lifetime, but it has a big responsibility when it's active, helping the body protect itself against autoimmunity, which occurs when the immune system turns against itself. Therefore, the thymus plays a vital role in the lymphatic system, your body's defense network, and the endocrine system. T lymphocytes can leave the thymus and enter the blood. The tonsils are a pair of soft tissue mass located at the rear of the throat, the pharynx, and encapsulate a collection of the lymphatic tissue. The tonsils are part of the lymphatic system, which helps to fight infections. However, removal of the tonsils do not seem to increase susceptibility to infection. Tonsils vary widely in size, as well as response to infection. Generally larger in childhood and regress with age. There are three types, adenoids, palatine and lingual. The superficial cervical lymph nodes can be divided into superficial anterior lymph nodes and posterior lateral superficial cervical lymph nodes. The anterior nodes lie close to the anterior jugular vein and collect lymph from the superficial surface of the anterior neck. Receive all the lymph from the neck, scalp, head, either directly or indirectly, arranged in a ring shape extending from underneath the chin, ultimately drained to the deep lymph nodes. The deep cervical lymph nodes receive all the lymph from the head and neck either directly or indirectly, be the superficial lymph nodes. They are organized into a vertical chain located within close proximity to the internal jugular vein. Provide lymphatic drainage to many parts of the head, including the pharynx, mouth and meninges. Submandibular lymph nodes sit between the submandibular salivary glands, which are underneath the tongue, and the mandible or lower jawbone. Occasionally, one or more of the lymph nodes may be embedded deeper in the salivary glands. Responsible for drainage of the tongue, submaxillary glands, the lips, the mouth and the conjunctiva. Anterior auricular lymph nodes are the ones located just in front of your ears. They drain lymph fluid from the eyes, cheeks and the scalp near your temples. Generally, Lymph nodes swell in only one area of the body at a time. The problems such as infection can usually be found nearby. The lymph nodes behind the ear are called the posterior auricular lymph nodes. A lymph node can swell if exposed to foreign materials. The glands, the lymph nodes on either side of the neck, under the jaw or behind the ears commonly swell when you have a cold or sore throat. More serious infections may cause the glands to enlarge and become very firm and tender. The occipital lymph nodes are located in the back of the head near the occipital bone of the skull, usually one to three occipital lymph nodes. Much like other lymph nodes located throughout the body, the occipital lymph nodes play an active role in the body's immune defence system. Collect the lymph from the occipital area of the scalp. Submental nodes are located between the anterior bellies of the digastric muscle. Drain the floor of the mouth and the central area of the lower lip and the apex of the tongue. Swollen lymph nodes under the jaw or on either side of the neck may hurt. When you turn your head in a certain way or when you're chewing food, they can often be felt simply by running your hand over your neck just below your jawline. They may be tender. Buccal nodes located on the buccinator opposite the angle of the mouth. They collect lymph from the cheeks, the lateral aspects of the nose, the upper lip, the lateral part of the lower lip, the gums and the anterior tongue. 
Oedema fluid retention occurs when the fluid isn't removed from the tissues. The two broad categories of fluid retention include generalised oedema, when swelling occurs throughout the body, and localised oedema, when particular parts of the body are affected. Lymphoedema is a long-term chronic condition that causes swelling in the body's tissue. It can affect any part of the body, but usually develops in the arms or legs. It develops when the lymphatic system does not work properly. Lymphatinitis is a medical term of enlargement in one or more lymph nodes, usually due to infection. Lymph nodes are filled with white blood cells that help your body fight infections. When lymph nodes become infected, it's usually because an infection started somewhere else in the body. Lymphoma is a cancer of the lymphatic system, which is a part of the body's germ-fighting network. The lymphatic system includes the lymph nodes, spleen, thymus gland and bone marrow. Lymphoma can affect all those areas as well as other organs throughout the body. Lupus is an autoimmune disease in which the immune system attacks its own tissue, causing widespread inflammation and tissue damage in the affected organs. It can affect the joints, skin, brain, lungs, kidneys and blood vessels. Let's review. The lymphatic system is important for the optimal function of our general and specific immune responses. It supports the circulatory system in collection of waste products and keeping the fluid balance in the body. The lymphatic system returns excess interstitial fluid to the blood, absorbs fats and fat soluble vitamins and provides defence against disease. Lymph is the fluid in the lymphatic vessels. It is picked up from the interstitial fluid and returned to the blood plasma. The lymphatic system carries out the body's immune responses by producing and distributing cells such as lymphocytes and microphanges that combat disease. Lymph vessels drain fluid from all parts of the body and return it to the heart. Helps maintain fluid balance. It returns excess fluid and proteins from the tissues that cannot be returned through the blood vessels. Collecting ducts, lymphatic vessels empty the lymph into the right lymphatic duct and the left lymphatic duct, also called the thoracic duct. These ducts connect to the subclavian vein, which returns lymph to your bloodstream. Six lymphatic organs include Bone marrow, which is a spongy-like tissue found inside the bones. The thymus is located behind the breastbone above the heart. Lymph nodes are small bean-shaped tissue found along the lymphatic vessels. The spleen, the tonsils, the mucous membranes that lines various cavities in the body and covers the surface of internal organs. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson and now have a better understanding of the lymphatic system. Thank you for listening.